Welcome back to this week's show. I'm Paul. Today is February 14th, which means it's Valentine's Day. Today is Dress Up Nice Day. See you guys soon. Thursday is for red or white. Choose your side. Friday is PJ Day. That means no body paint allowed, Trevor. Oh, man. Freedom. Courageous. Brave. Fearless. Heroic. Bravery. Meaningful. Courageous. Powerful. Equality. Sacrifice. Courage. Heroic. Fearless. Bold. Courageous. Zora Neale Hurston was born on January 7, 1891 in Eatonville, Florida. Eatonville was one of the first all-black towns in the United States, with her father even becoming mayor at one point. During childhood, Zora's mother died in 1904, making her home life unstable, and by the age of 16, she became a maid for a musical theater show where she traveled the country. After some time, she enrolls in Howard University and gets a big break when she writes Spunk, a Harlem-based short story. This lands her a scholarship at Bernard College where she studied anthropology under the famous Franz Boas. She also joined the Harlem Renaissance, an artistic revolution that fought back against racial stereotypes among black people. During her studies, she goes down to the South to see what life is like among African Americans. After she graduated in 1928, she wrote Mules and Men in 1935, which openly discussed oppression, slavery, and racism. She then goes on to write Their Eyes Were Watching God, her most famous book that challenged stereotypes. She keeps writing books including Tell My Horse, Dust Tracks on the Road, and Seraph on the Sawani. 
Some critics praised her work for the simplicity and honesty, but others disapproved of her controversial opinions on ideas at the time. Tragically, she dies on January 8, 1960. Throughout her whole life, she never made a lot of money, but inspired the next generations to tell their story as well. Michael Orr is really fast. Uh, I think he's a smurf. I think he's really tall. He was famous for baseball. A blind guy. The guy from Shrek. He was uh, a character in a movie called The Blind Side, and he was like a football player. Who is he? Orr is well known for protecting Ravens quarterback Joe Flacco. He is better known for serving as the inspiration for The Blind Side in the 2009 movie that tells the story of him going from childhood poverty and foster care to the NFL. Orr was born in Memphis, Tennessee. He was one of 12 children of Denise Orr. His mother suffered from alcoholism and crack cocaine addiction, and his father, Michael Jerome Williams, was frequently in prison. He received little attention or discipline during his childhood. Starting with just a single white t-shirt, perseverance, and the character to do what is right, Michael now finds himself in a position to help the, the kids who face similar circumstances. The white t-shirt you see in our logo has deep meaning in both personal life of our founder, Michael Orr, and our commitment to fill the gap in education for youth. When Michael Orr was fighting to survive on the streets, he did not have much of anything to his name. One item that he did have was a single white t-shirt. Learning to value what he had, Michael washed the shirt daily to ensure that he could be the best he possibly could with what he had. The Orr Foundation intends to empower socially disadvantaged youth by providing them with opportunities and supports they need to overcome poverty through education, mentorship, and community. A chance is all they need. Many underprivileged youth will never know a life free of the hardship they were born into. While others turn their back, we reach out. We believe that education provides the foundation needed to break the cycle of poverty for this generation. like to wear Crocs. 
I like Crocs because they're very comfortable and they're all terrain. Stanleys are really popular. I like Stanleys because um, they hold ice for like really long. The gritty, duh. I like the gritty because it's an amazing dance move and I love just doing the gritty. I think Lululemon's popular. I like Lululemon because it's super cute and comfy. Harriet was born in March 1822. Harriet was born in Maryland and was one of the most famous conductors of the Underground Railroad. In 1849, Harriet and her two brothers, Ben and Harry, planned to escape from their plantation. Her brothers decided not to escape, but Harriet didn't back down, and she successfully had made it to Philadelphia. For the next 10 years, Harriet assisted over 300 slaves escaping using the Underground Railroad. Amazingly, Harriet didn't let one slave get lost or caught. After accomplishing her goal, she bought a home in New York and spent the remainder of her life there. On March 10, 1913, Harriet passed away from the pneumonia. She was 91 years old when she died. Harriet's bravery and courage allowed her to accomplish so much. Harriet Tubman's positive impacts was she escaped her own slavery plantation and she escaped other black people that were being used for hard labor using the Underground Railroad. In 2009, history was made when Disney released a film featuring the first ever African-American princess, Tiana. The film was called Princess and the Frog and was a story about a hard-working waitress named Tiana who dreams of opening her own restaurant. After kissing a prince who had been turned into a frog by an evil witch doctor, Tiana becomes a frog herself and must find a way to turn back into a human before it's too late. After the film was released, black girls all over the world were inspired by Tiana, giving them a taste of Disney royalty. Along with promoting racial equality, Tiana was an all-around good person to look up to. Tiana had respect for her own wishes and dreams, but knew that wishing on stars and setting goals for yourself would only get you half of the way. One, I play rugby. Two, I can program in three languages. And three, I speak Dutch. I think the lie is that he can code in three languages. I think the lie is that he can code in three different languages. 
I think the lies that he plays rugby. The Basketball Hall of Famer who passed away last July at 88 played an active role in the civil rights movement in the 1960s and continued to advocate for racial justice after his playing career ended. Russell was one of the first professional athletes who used his platform for causes outside sports to pave the way for future generations of athletes to follow. The road to the 1961-62 title began in a rocky style during the exhibition season of the Celtics' African-American players were denied admission to the Indiana Bar and Kentucky Hotel coffee shop. So Russell, Casey Jones, Sam Jones, Satch Sanders, all African-Americans, boycotted a game in Lexington. Bill Russell won 11 championships, 5 MVPs, averaged 15.1 points per game in his whole career, which established him as the best NBA player ever at the time. But do people really consider him good now? I mean, do you? Because first, I have to appreciate this by saying that I think that if the kids today don't be, are not willing to stand up and fight, then it's, forget it, it's hopeless. period. It is. Forget it's it. Hopeless. It's not a matter of putting it off for 10 years. Right. I ain't got 10 years. It's not a matter of, of uh, delaying it because it's like it's now or never. I think it's that serious. I really think it's that serious. A Jason Pasta production. Born on June 17, 1987, Kendrick Lamar faced the harsh realities of growing up in a tough neighborhood in Compton with high crime rates. His family, residing in Section 8 housing, faced challenges, relying on government aid such as welfare and food stamps. At times, they even experienced homelessness. During his teenage years, Kendrick found his passion for crafting rhymes, eventually releasing his first mixtape in 2003 under the name K-Dog. This caught the attention of Top Dog, who recognized Kendrick's talent, signing him immediately. By 2011, he earned the title New King of West Coast. In 2012, now with Aftermath Entertainment, he dropped his new debut long play, making a debut at number 2 on the Billboard 200 chart. In 2013, Kendrick Lamar faced the disappointment of not winning any of the seven aw Grammy Awards he was nominated for. Despite this setback and a pivotal turn, in 2015, when his new album gained popularity on streaming services, breaking Spotify records of 9.6 million streams, shortly afterward, former President Barack Obama praised Kendrick's sing single, How Much a Dollar Cost, declaring it, it his favorite of 2015. Some of Kendrick's achievements include being nominated for 39 Grammys and winning 14, being the most decorated artist in Bet Hip Hop Hit Awards history with 29 wins and 11 MTV Video Music Awards. In 2018, Kendrick Lamar won a Pulitzer Prize for his music. A Pulitzer Prize is recognized as the greatest national award in music creation, literary excellence, and print journalism. The official website comments on Kendrick's album, stating, A virtuistic song collection unified by its vernacular authenticity and the rhythmic di 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 that offers affecting visionettes, capturing the complexity of African American life. Kendrick Lamar's impact goes beyond music. It's deeply rooted in his commitment to giving back to his community and the world. Growing up in Compton, he's donated hundreds of thousands to the school system, not even including the $50,000 he gave to his high school music program. Kendrick then received the key to, key to the city of Compton, civilizing trust and honor. Through his 2014 world tour, Lamar turned performances into philanthropy, sending his profits to Habitat for Humanity. As the headliner for of the of the 2016 Global Citizen Festival, he used his influence to address issues like gender inequality, extreme poverty, and education access. Additionally, he has contributed thousands to the Red Cross. Despicable Me 3. The new Willy Wonka movie.
My favorite movie is The Hunger Games. My favorite movie is Frozen. My favorite movie is Cool Runners. Pirates of the Caribbean. My favorite movie is Spider-Man Away. gave birth to Thurgood Marshall on July 2, 1908. Thurgood grew up in Baltimore, Maryland and attended college at Lincoln University followed by law school at Howard University. However, African Americans at this time were still unfairly restricted by Jim Crow laws. The verdict of the Plessy v. Ferguson Supreme Court case in 1896 established that segregation was legal if the accommodations were similar. More often than not, however, these facilities were not equal. For example, schools for African Americans did not have the teachers, resources, or funding to provide an education for the students. In all, the lack of a proper education caused a continuing gap in society and was unequal. After meeting with Charles Hamilton Houston, a member of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, Thurgood and Charles made it their mission to advocate for integration. Thurgood and Houston argued in many civil rights cases for people who were denied access to colleges and education. In the Missouri X. Rel. Gaines v. Canada case in 1938, Thurgood and Houston won and the verdict required states to have a law school for African Americans or to integrate other ones. The impact of these cases helped make progress for desegregation in the country. One of Thurgood's most notable cases was the Brown v. Board of Education Supreme Court case. Thurgood proved segregated schools caused inferiority and inequality in children. The impact of this case abolished segregation in U.S. public schools. The case also ruled that the Plessy v. Ferguson 1896 verdict was unconstitutional. President John F. Kennedy gave Thurgood Marshall an appointment to the U.S. Court of Appeals in 1961. Thurgood Marshall would later become Solicitor General in 1965 before becoming a Supreme Court Justice in 1967 during President Lyndon B. Johnson's administration. Thurgood Marshall served 24 years on the United States Supreme Court and retired in 1991. As a justice, he made decisions in the Supreme Court to strive for equality as he ruled on constitutional cases. Thurgood Marshall will always be remembered as our nation's first African-American Supreme Court justice. His contributions to our society today cannot be forgotten. I could get used to a view like this. Yep, I'm used to it. Guys, I want a castle. Ah, the kingdom. It is beautiful. Clapping, dancing, general merrymaking, not a care in the world. At least for most folks. See that handsome fellow running for his life? That is me. They just can't get my nose right. And that tower? Well, in that tower, there lived a girl who was just waiting for her life to begin. We really hit it off. How you doing? Gentleman that I am, I decided to help her. I'm prepared to offer you a deal. She could not resist me. I didn't want to have to do this, but you leave me no choice. Here comes the smolder. You coming, Blondie? And before we knew it, we began to uncover some secrets. I have to know what they are. I mean, this is serious stuff that just might turn this kingdom upside down. Flynn? Ryder! Run! Head down. Head down. 
Arms in. Arms in. Knees apart. Knees apart. Knees apart. Huh? Ah! Yeah! Ah! Yeah! Look out! Ah! Something brought you here. Fate, destiny. A horse. Gotham, your finest table, please. Ah! Who's that? They don't like me. Who's that? Let's just assume for the moment that everyone in here doesn't like me. Glenn! Look out! This is kind of an off day for me. This doesn't normally happen. Go. Live your dream. I will. Your dream stinks. I was talking to her.